Good evening, black people, African-Americans, and Chet Hanks. Wagwan, you crazy white boy. Buh, buh. I'm coming to you from one of the blackest locations in America, the backyard where Meghan Markle spilled the tea to Oprah. Tonight, we black people are gathered here to once again ask ourselves the question, where we is? And let's be honest, 2020 was one of the most challenging years in recent history for the black community, beginning with COVID, which frankly is a racist virus, as it accomplished what the criminal justice system has been trying to do for years, lock up every black person in America. And COVID was especially hard for black people, because you know we love to get together. I'm talking about churches, cookouts, and secret black people meetings where we decide which dumb viral dance to trick white people into doing next. The next one up, the guppy. But as if the Rona wasn't bad enough, this past year, we also had to deal with the ongoing pandemic of police brutality. We witnessed the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and frankly, too many innocent black people to name. But we didn't take it lying down. Demonstrators took to the streets, creating the largest protest in American history against police brutality. And so for that, we thank our activist leaders for organizing. We thank our allies for marching alongside us. And to a certain extent, we even thank the police. You showed up to a police brutality march and did police brutality. That really helped us hammer home the point. For the first time in what feels like forever, our cries were heard and the police officer responsible for the death of George Floyd was held accountable. We saw justice because of marches, political activism, and most importantly of all, those black squares on Instagram. Still not sure what they did, but it must have worked. The Black Lives Matter movement was felt in every aspect of life and culture in America, including sports, where athletes from the WNBA to tennis to the NFL made their voices heard. NBA players even managed to stage a protest of police violence from inside the NBA bubble at Walt Disney World. That's the blackest thing to happen at Walt Disney World since the time I got pulled over for going too fast on Space Mountain. But amidst all the chaos that was 2020, black folks still made major strides. For the first time in our history, we witnessed a black person assume one of the most important positions in America. Of course, I'm talking about the first black bachelor. That's right. For too long, our nation has been forced to watch only white men get chlamydia in a hot tub on primetime TV, but no longer. We did it, Dr. King. Your dream is happening. Also making history was Kamala Harris, the first black woman elected vice president of the United States. Congratulations, Kamala, on your amazing achievement. I find great comfort in knowing that a black woman is serving in the White House, and I find it even more comfort in knowing that when the White House screws something up, we can blame it on the white guy in charge. Kind of a best of both worlds when you think about it. We must also thank Stacey Abrams. Her massive voter registration campaign turned Georgia blue, flipped the Senate, and showed the entire nation that if you wanna get to the White House, you need to go through Atlanta first. And I mean that literally. One time I had a flight from New York to DC that stopped over in Hartsville. You tell me how that makes sense. It was also a historic year for black entertainers as their art continued to reflect the black experience. It reflected our hope through Amanda Gorman's words at the presidential inauguration. It reflected our greatness as Beyonce became the most awarded female artist in Grammy history. And it reflected the fact that black people are sexy as hell. Between Megan and Cardi doing the WAP and the pullout king on Bridgerton, black people have never made America hornier. Hell, when I go to the store now, those elderly cashier ladies, they checking me out. And for once, it's not because they think I'm stealing, which I am, you know, can't stay this sexy without nipping a few lotions and cleansers from time to time. Which brings me to the future of black shit and what's in store for us this year. While the rest of America gets back to normal, this is the year black America created a new normal. Cause that old normal was some bullshit. I'm talking about a new normal, where cops being held accountable isn't as rare as getting another Frank Ocean album. A new normal where I march not because I need to fight for my rights, 
but because I need to get my steps in due to a predisposition to high cholesterol, a new normal where we can gather indoors with family and loved ones, but still tell our weird uncle that he has to hang in the garage just to be safe. A new normal where Gorilla Glue is hair gel. That's the new normal we must strive for, and that I'm confident we will achieve. God bless you, God bless black people, and God bless the meme of Michael Jordan looking at an iPad. I say good evening.